drive a car right enough the street. I measured it out and there's just enough room. Look around and see if you can find a minty tin. Take out the fence, pave the front, a brushwood fence. Is brushwood too twee? We've got to have something in keeping with the period. Do you know what a minty tin looks like? Square. About so big. Are you going to help or not? What sort of fence would you build to maintain the character of the place? Peter, I'm talking to you. Jesus. Look up and down the street. Every house has a row of cast iron spears on constant guard. Cast iron spears. They're the only fence for Burke Street. You're not taking this seriously. As a kid, I used to dream of those spears. Japanese spies would fall from my window and be horribly impaled on them. Oh, do you mind? Have a look at the third one from the gate. It's loose. I spent a boyhood loosening that spear. <coughs> Could never get it out. Christ, what a Roman soldier I'd have made turning up with that spear in a garbage tin lid. Well, your spears have to go. <coughs> you can't restore a house properly if you leave everything the way it was. It's got a gas box. Every house in Birch Street has a gas box. Should we leave it? The gas box? Develop it. Feature it. You've lived here all your life. What are the heritage colours? How was the gas box painted when you were a boy? I've lived in this house for 22 years. I've visited it for the last 10. It's always looked like it does now, in need of a paint. Now look through that tin. You're looking for money or a will? Rubbish. Build. Morage. Boring. The gas box. Do we keep the gas box? Oh, Christ, yes. Symbol of Australian culture, the gas box. I mean, forget your wide open spaces, your windmills, your land of spreading plains. It was the gas box that made this country what it is today. Half the kids in Birch Street were conceived on the gas box. <laughs> Mum and Dad inside, Fanny and a fella outside having a feel up on the gas box, planning how they'd get married and move into the back room until Mum and Dad died so they can move into the front room. Mum and Dad knowing what's going on because 20 years ago, they were having a feel up on the gas box, planning how they'd get married and move into the back room. The symbol of the great wheel of life is the gas box of Birch Street. Now look for a bloody will. Don't. What? I don't think we should. I mean, your father's not even dead yet and we're searching for his will. It's not dignified. Listen to the woman. She plans the destruction of the Roman spears of my childhood Measures the front porch of my soon-to-be-dead father for parking space for the porch. That's him. Details. And she calls me undignified. Mind you, she did save the gas box, that holy shrine of working-class law. The National Trust would be proud of you. You're a shit. Dignity. Huh. Come here and I'll give you dignity. I'll roll you in the sheets of my soon-to-be-dead father's bed, drench them with the sweaty smell of sex, Take out the paint box of my youth and paint your nipples, the better to scandalise the neighbours. What are the heritage colours of nipples this year? Come in. Oh shit, that hurt. Affection. Little tiger, aren't you? Affection returned. Now look for a will, or there may be nowhere to park the Datsun. I feel uncomfortable here. Sense the old man lying on his bed trying to look up your skirt, can you? He fancied you, you know. Fancied him a bit myself. Huh. He was sexy. God, you're a slut. He was 70 and geriatric. A dirty old man. A dirty old man, poor. The first time he put his hands on me, I could tell he was used to getting what he wanted. I was shocked. He was sexy. How sexy? On a scale of 1 to 10, how sexy? In comparison with anyone I might know. Do me a favour. Well, you better find that sexy old man's will. All that sexy old man's cash. Well, you may never get to live in that sexy old man's house with his limp dick of a son. Oh, grow up. I've got some feelings, that's all. It's like robbing a grave. An hour after that old bastard's dead, you'll have every urger, tout and tipster that he ever took down around here to pay their respects. He ha has a ring with a diamond the size of a peanut. And there's a minty tin around here somewhere that's full of cash. Saturday nights. When I was a kid, I'd see him come home from the pub with a roll of notes. Fruit for the sideboard, he'd say. Minties for the tin. As soon as they know he's dead, every mug punter who ever lost five bob to him will be round here looking to get it back. I'm getting in first. That's all. 
Now, every piece of paper, in every tin, methodically, and then open the pages of every book in this room. The money or the will? If I find the ring, it's mine. I got his slips. Shit, Dad. You scared me. I closed the door when I came in. He gave it to me when he saw the ambulance bloke in the pub. I reckon he must have thought he was a copper. As I lifted him onto the stretcher, he grabbed my hand. I thought he must have been a bit confused or something. It all happened so fast, him collapsing like that. But when I grabbed his hands, there were his slips. He was palming them to me. We must have done that a hundred times. Mick could smell a copper a mile off. He'd see a bloke come into the pub. Buy a beer. Come up the lay a bit. I'd have taken a bit. But next thing you know, I've got his slips, and Mick's telling some mug copper, there's no SP operating in this pub. Try the railway, say. How do you get in, Dad? I've got a key. Mick gave it to me when he got sick. Mummy used to send me around with his tea. Oh, she sent around these sandwiches. Do you know where his minty tin is, oh, Dad? Don't worry about it. I've got enough to cover his slips. I'd like to no, know. No, no, it's okay. He took, he took the bit just before the fourth in Melbourne. He was having a good day. About a hundred in front of that stage. I'd like to know where his tin is. Oh, looks like I'll have to go around the mass tonight. I think the Mons are saying six o'clock. He's got to collect here by the look of things. Mick collapsing like that got me a bit confused. Make the man give you your father's tin, Peter. Did you let the Mons know about Mick? He'd want to know about Mick. Bet with Mick for years, he has. Dada, this is important. I need to know where Mick's minty tin is. Oh, it's around here somewhere. Hated doing Saturday afternoon confession. Where exactly? Never asked, Pete. Even when he couldn't get to the races, he'd sit in the confessional with a tranny on and an earpiece and listening to the races. You can tell him anything and he'd never hear a thing. <laughs> Young blokes used to line up. Rape, murder, incest, they'd trot it all out just to test him. And the old bloke would just wave his arms about and mutter, see three Hail Marys. <laughs> old Mother Murphy used to tell everyone what a saintly man he was. When you go to confession, you can hear the voices speaking to him, she used to say. <laughs> oh, and, and Mrs. Theopolis. You know her? She lives around the corner in Best Street. Six kids she's got. Her old man thinks they're his. But she's been having it off with the border for years. Six kids. All red-headed. <laughs> Only red-headed Greeks I've ever seen. <laughs> Any rate, she decides to make a clean breast of it. And she gets around to the Mons one Saturday afternoon. He's got a Sunday's collection going around on a good thing at Ramby. They turn in the corner of the home with the good thing locked into a pocket as she tells him the six kids belong to the border. Your dirty Jezebel! shouts the Mons. She's weeping and beating her breast and saying she'll never do it again as the hoop gets busy with the persuader and gets the nag clear halfway down the street. Lay in her in, screams the old bloke. Flog the heathen! She's promising she will and she'll always be faithful to her old man as they fall across the line with a good thing in by her nose. The saints be praised, she hears through the curtain. Then, say three Hail Marys. Well, she's out that night in the middle of Best Street, laying into the red-headed border, and he, poor bugger, <laughs> wondering what he's done wrong. Shut up for a minute, Dada. Keep it for the wake. Mick's not coming home from the hospital. He's finished. No, he'll make it. I've seen him cook before. He's tougher than you think. He'll come good. Not this time. He's finished. Come on, Pete. Don't talk like that. The doctor says that it's a matter of hours, Dada. Days at the most. I was shocked when I saw him. All those tubes and things in him. And I'm trying to get things in order for him. There might be things he's got to sign. That sort of thing. Didn't like the look of him. Didn't want to see the old bloke lying there like that. So I need to find his minty tin or anywhere else he might keep his papers. That's not Mick, I started to tell the nurse when she took me in. He looked too little, you know. That's not Mick, I thought. Mick was always in charge. The tin, Dada! Where's his bloody tin? You can ask him for it, Pete. He can still talk to me when I was at the hospital. I don't want to upset him if I can help it. Well, I'll help you look. He wouldn't have let it out of his sight if I know the old bastard. Did you notice it when you were moving his bed down here after he got sick? Gay, you go through these clothes. Check the lining. He could have sewn something in the lining. I reckon I should take his suits and things with me when I go to see the bonds. He 
got some nice clothes, Mick. Always very particular with his shoes. The Mons will know some poor bugger who'll be grateful for them. Nothing leaves this house until I've checked it and then checked it again. I know that old bastard. He'd half sole a shoe with a hundred dollar note if he thought someone was after it. Just go through the pockets, then the lining, then check his hats. <laughs> left it under such circumstances as to indicate he would have no further use for this afternoon. <laughs> left everything in the bag. Except the motor. Oh, yeah. How are you holding it? Oh. oh, half a quid and a bit of silver. And then a couple of quid all up. No, it's a bit in the bag, but I like that. <laughs> we get to collect on the first, we're in business. If not, God help us. Okay, right up the checks. Black Mark, seven in the field. Black Mark's the favourite. And the local sharks are asking you to buy. <laughs> At five for four on for money. Oh. Ragtime at twos and any price you like about the rest. One horse racing on our country track. These bastards shitting themselves over taking a risk. Okay, let's go. Let's see if we can encourage the locals to invest on anything other than the hot pot. Three. three to one on the board. Three to one, bar one. Three to one, rag time. Three is rag time. Fifteen shillings to five rag time. One pound rag time. Two bottles. Turn it up, mate. <laughs> Not worth writing the ticket. Tell you what, make it half a, half a crown and I'll set you. Okay. Seven and six, half a crown, rag time. Oh. On the board, price is on the board. King William, tens. Fifty shillings to five, King William. Three pounds to one rag time. Four pounds rag time. I don't seem to want much else, Mick. Yeah, well, friends are doing a little business on the favourite. Ah. There's courage for you. One of your competitors just got hit with half a quid on the favourite. <coughs> He's dropped the prices. Hmm? Good enough for me. Four's rag time, four to one rag time on the board. Four's rag time. Two shillings. <laughs> You get a bit two shillings, darling. <laughs> what horse do I think will win? Well, sweetheart, wouldn't make much sense for me to tell you which horse I thought would win, just so you could win money from me. <laughs> now, now, would it? Our girl, yes, she's a beautiful horse, and a jockey's cap is the same colour as your beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> Forty shillings to two, our girl. I hope she wins for you, darling. A spin rag time. 20 pounds to five rag time. How, we, how much are we holding on rag time? Uh, six quid, six quid, 15. Three, seven quid. That last five or fours. Bugger it, nearly 19 quid. Well, let's not be greedy. Take a tender and lay it off. I'll mind the sheets. Three's rag time, three to one rag time, three's rag time. I reckon that last bet might have come from the ring, Mick. I saw that bloke with one of the other clerks. Well, don't hang about. Take this brick and lay it off there. Nine pounds to three rag time. What's that, mate? Two quid rag time? Don't you bastards want anything else? Where are they? Sorry, mate, they're racing.
Black Mark well in the lead with his head on his chest. It's in the bag, Dada. You get set. Two quid of twos, two of six to four. Best I could get. Pity to have wasted the money. They couldn't hit the favour with a gun. Hey, let him go. Let him go, you bastard. Here, hold this. Oh, oh, you bastard. Look at him, will you? He's standing up, hanging on for dear life. And here comes that bloody rag time. It's a fix, Dad. We've been left holding the pool. The money, give me the money. Now, take the bag, leg it as fast as you can. <coughs> I'll meet you back in Sydney. Well, off you go. I'll, I'll shout a bit to attract some attention. Hey, the money! He's grabbed me bag and shot through with the money. Get after him. He's taking me bag and the money. Call the police. There he goes. Get after him. Don't let him get away. Stop him at the gate. He's got all my money. <laughs> Jesus, the <it's> sad. <laughs> But the silly bugger has enough sense to ditch the bag and that coat. If they catch him, they'll kill him. This is not going to do Mr. Cox's reputation any good at all. Now, I've got a couple of little collects on ragtime. <laughs> Somewhere where there's snow. Like where? Tibet. <laughs> Come to Tibet. In the old man. Having another drink, I see. Uh -huh. That stuff will put you in your grave. When they dig your grave, will they know who they're putting in it? That's the measure of a man, son. Who will look down and say, oh, that's P.P. McLaughlin. I remember him. I'll get my jollies while I'm here, if you don't mind. I couldn't give a stuff about who said what when I'm gone. Jollies. <laughs> jollies. There's a great word. What's a jolly? Sounds like something you might nibble with a beer. And of course, when you go, they'll queue up to strew flowers on the grave and wash the ground with tears. <laughs> oh, some will cry. Some will spit in me grave. And one or two I could name will be there to gather up the flowers, sell them again at the pub. <laughs> but they'll be there. Jesus, what an ego. Call it spirit, juice, guts, balls. You wouldn't recognise it, son, because you don't have any. Christ, I wasted a good name on you. <laughs> P. P. McLaughlin. Go ahead. Did he ever tell you what the second P stands for? Peter Paul Percy. It stands for Percy. Peter Percy. Pan. Peter Pan McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest racehorse Australia ever produced. And I waste the name on a, a money lender. His mother would be proud of this boy. There's a lot of her in him. I'm not going to start this again. And you won't goad me into an argument. I advise people on their investments. You're a nibbler, a sipper. You're surrounded by peaches and you preserve them in a jar without letting the fresh juice run down your gullet. You measure life, son. You don't live it. Spoken like a true urger. Don't drink. Don't smoke. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. You're guaranteed to lift it, you're eight. And of course, you'll need some money to enjoy life in your 80s. So, snip a bit of cash off here, trim a few pennies over there, and give them to clever P.P. McLaughlin. He'll warm them, cajole them to breed, and then he'll dole them back to you beatful by beatful. You get your jollies blind with bits of other people's lives. And you're too lazy to live your own. You paid me promises. You paid me promises. You pay them in promises that one day, one day, they'll be able to live. Well, I'm 70, 
And I've lived every day of it. At the expense of other people, as a small time bookie. Not so small. I had five men running for me once. And what happened? I went broke. But I lived. You pulled a clumsy, not very clever con and got, what was it? Refresh my memory. Two months in Maitland in 1948. And I ran a book inside and made enough money to start again when I got here. <laughs> You've been to jail, Mr McLaughlin? Uh, twice, darling. The second time was when his cold bitch of a mother put me inside. I was down on my luck and couldn't pay the blood money she called maintenance. Money for anything, except food for your kid. I might have been there yet if it wasn't for his Aunt Dolly. Although I don't want to think about how she might have got hold of the money. Remind me, which of my aunties was that? The peroxide blonde or the one with the big tits? Guys, <laughs> you're wasted on him, you know. His previous women have been stringy and mean, like his mother. You could be a beautiful woman with the right man. Oh, you're pretty enough now, but you don't, don't shine. A woman needs a right man to make her shine. God, I wish you were around when Tomo's was running. I'd have shown some sights to make you shine. Tomo's? The two-up school. Our national shrine. An illegal gambling place. The mafia, gangsters, just like the movies. I mean Tomo's two-up. The fairest game in the world. The only place where the little bloke can be sure of a fair deal. No <laughs> copper in Sydney could ever find it. No, the only ones who couldn't. You went there? Tell me, what was it like? Would you like to come and look? Take you back 40 years. What do I wear? <laughs> the best. You're coming with me. Saturday night. <laughs> Catch a cab. <laughs> Taxi! Where's Thomas tonight, mate? It's as simple as that. He drops us off somewhere behind the old stadium. The cockatoo gives us a grin, points at the door at the top of some stairs. Anyone with a woman as beautiful as you on his arm has to have money. Feel it. Feel it? As we get closer to the door, my palms are sweating. I want to walk in there slowly. I want to walk in there slowly and show you off. Though, to tell the truth, nobody's going to take any notice of you in there. There's real money in there. That's the ring up there under the light. Come in, Spinner. See those pennies spin in the air. Fall down on the cams, Matt, dead. Heads, heads on them like mice, shouts the ring boss. Come on. These little blokes are out here are betting two bob, five bob, half a quid with a bloke beside them. Betting with the Spinner. Dreaming of building a bank and getting closer and closer to the ring and the big money. Hang on, hang on. What's that bloke there? He came in with half a quid. Now he's got 50. Look at his eyes. He wants to get near the ring and try some real money. But he's counting his notes. Never count your money. He's pissing himself. Ha! Look at him walk away. He'll tell his mates. I won a hundred of Tomo's the other night. But the lie will eat of his guts. There's money in my pocket. There's room at the front for money. I'll toss 50 quid on the floor. Here, here it is. We'll, bet, we'll follow the spinner. 100. 200. 500. Go on, you take the kit. Bend your knees. Throw those pennies high. And we'll come down rich. Money's for throwing in the air and watching it come down more money. Hang on. Go on, pick it up. Put a couple hundred in your purse. This is where the big night. 
hang on, we've got to tip the boss, and then that big bloke by the door will call us a cab. And nobody will leave this place, but we've been gone 20 minutes. We are big winners. Stop a minute. Stand there. Feel it on your back? Feel your eyes? <laughs> That's them watching their money walk away. <laughs> now, we we'll go back to your place. I'll undress you slowly. Lie you down on your bed. And cover you with money. Real money. Big money. Tens and twenties. And they'll whisper to us while we make love. when I was 16. Is it true? Did they really throw money on the floor? The birthday treat. Two half quids I gave him. Fresh minted, play money. Bundles of money? Sweating men. Grunting like apes throwing pennies in the air. Nothing to lose and everything to win. What's the most you ever won there? What's the most anyone ever won there? Greed and fear. You can smell it. He walked out of there with those same two notes. His hand crammed on them so tight, they were a crumpled, sweaty mess. The fear you could smell was your own. You pissed yourself. Peter, I'd have had to try. Can we go? Can we still go? Tom is dead. I saw him work that story on my mother once. Only the ending was different. Remember? They killed it when they made it illegal. How do you enjoy yourself? When you know that win or lose, part of your money finishes up with the government. The last spin. If only the last spin had gone differently. How many times? You if never, only. You never heard me whine, boy. Still working the pubs, are you? How do you match up against the tab? Sling to the coppers? Or have they written you off as a poor old bastard to show the new boys? See that scrawny old bloke? He's the last of the SP bookies. I could still buy and sell you. What do you do now when you're Welsh on a bet? Christ, I'd like to see you scrabbling to get over a back fence while poor bloody Dada stayed behind to take the kicking again. You're a museum piece, a dodo, extinct. This whole place is a shrine to has-beens. The con men, petty crooks, you set up as my boyhood heroes. Mm. And do you know the saddest thing of all? There's not one mention of you in any of these, is there? Not one. You couldn't even get hung in a rogues gallery. Peter, don't. That's spiteful. Don't you worry about me, darling. See that picture on the wall? That's me as a hoop. I wrote a few winners before I got too heavy. Let me tell you a secret. There's more to being a jockey than just being able to ride a horse. Sometime, maybe in your first race, maybe third, sometime, you see a gap. You know, if you could squeeze your horse into that gap, you could win. You could get squashed and killed, but you could win. I've been through that gap. Nobody can tell Mick McLaughlin anything about himself that he doesn't already know. I'll pin your ears back yet, young prick. <laughs> You right, mate? Oh, oh, Shit, Beck, you're spewing blood. Hang on, I'll call an ambulance. Help us up. Jeez, oh, look at your face. The bastards must have bashed you with that brick back through at me. Where's my hat? Never mind your hat. Can you get up? 
Get me hat. Find me hat. All right, all right. Ah, here it is. Inside. Look in the lining. Is the dough still there? You crafty bastard. Always keep the big notes in me hat. I saw him following me out of the pub. All I got was a lousy few bob. They didn't get the big stuff. Stuff the money, mate. They almost killed you. I'd have given them the bloody money. My money? I want it fair and square. Get us out of here. Can you stand? Oh, Jesus, I thought they'd never stop. Oh, I got stuck in for a while, but I thought, fold up, let them take the lousy few quid and get it over with. But they didn't want the money. They wouldn't stop. They just kept belling me and belling me. You want to call the cops? <laughs> it was the cops. <laughs> <laughs> that lousy crown sergeant's been getting a 20 quid on the winner of the last for six months. A couple of short price favourites come in. And he says he wants 30 quid on them. He's not told him to go to hell. And he said the boys were bastard. Why didn't he just knock you off? Because he's greedy. He knocks me off. He's got to wait for someone else to set up before he can put the hard word on him. He's greedy. He's a coward. He's too lousy to put a bet on himself. He just wants to shake the money tree. Get me home, Dad. Oh, oh, God. Oh, I can't stand up. Hang on. I'll knock you. Oh, 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 my ribs! Oh, damn it, take it easy, easy! Oh, shit, I'm bleeding all over you. <laughs> Four hours to change the rest of your life. Four hours that will change the rest of your life. To change, that will change. Four hours to change the rest of your life? Or four hours that will change the rest of your life? What do you think? Where are we going? Hey? Tonight. Where are we going tonight? I didn't know we were going anywhere. It's Saturday night. So? So? I am not sitting home on a Saturday night. <coughs> Married people sit at home on Saturday night. The pub. The pub, the pub. It's important for your business contacts to be seen. You know. How do you expect to develop a business? If oh, for Christ's sake. I said we were going to the pub. Again? You don't want to go to the pub? Nobody goes to the pub anymore. Last week everybody was going to the pub. If I was going to build my business, I had to be seen at the pub. Not last week. No one's been going to the pub for weeks now. Whenever. I'm only trying to help you. Where do you want to go? Where do I have to be seen if I'm going to build my business this week? Everyone is talking about the Mushroom Club. Simon was talking about it at work yesterday. You have to wear a 60s gear or they don't let you in. <laughs> and there's pictures of Bob Menzies all around the place. It's a joke. I'm laughing. <laughs> he groped you. Simon, he groped you. Last time we went out together, he groped you. I hit him. He hit me. Screams, blood, remember? He was drunk. Don't be so aggressive. I don't have any 60s gear. I don't remember what 60s gear is. I've got some marvellous stuff from Vinnie's. You wear flares and platform shoes. Not for anyone. Do you <laughs> want to go or don't you? How much cash do you have? About $100. So, I have to pay again. What happened to Miss Independence? Well, you earn more than I do. So leave the cheap ass bastards. They're sending me overseas next month. Last month they were sending you overseas next month. What's so special about buying plastic jewellery anyway? Just ring up Mr Ho in Taiwan and ask him to send a container load. You've got to know what will be in fashion next year. It's not easy. Look, they send their spies to Italy, France, they see what's in this year and they make it in plastic and sell it to you for next year. Trust them, they're experts. And I'm not. Darling, plastic jewellery is plastic jewellery. Which shows just how much you know. And don't patronise me. Bracelets, bangles, beads. There's only so much you can do with a bead. Oh, the great artist. Art? Art, she calls it. My sweet, these are extruded melamines we're talking about. Polymers. 
Leftover petrol. Christ, you're so <laughs> smug. Simple high school chemistry. Well, it's the colour and the shape and the style of that leftover petrol that's important. Sometimes, of course, it's an epoxy resin. For instance, plaster of Paris. Will you shut up? If the fashion next year is military, we'll need buckles, badges, that sort of thing. If it's an Asian bracelets, look, anklets, and a nose stud. Oh God, they're sexy. Would you wear one if I bought it for you? What? A nose stud. A real one. Ruby. In your dreams. If I make a mistake, it will cost the firm thousands. Okay. Okay. We'll go to the mushroom club and I'll pay. But if you get groped, call the bouncer. Don't look at me. <laughs> We have a joint account. If I get 60 of them to sign up, is 60 too many to aim for, do you think? At least for the housekeeping. We should. I mean, you've got to set yourself targets, but there's no point in aiming too high. It's only fair. Once you used to bring home flowers. Now if you bring home a sausage, I'm supposed to feel grateful. You do eat here, you know. Last week I brought home prawns, a bottle of Midori, some pawpaws. You found them. You don't <laughs> find prawns. You don't sit down on a park bench and see a package and say, Oh good, prawns. I'll just take these prawns home. You know, fine prawns. Someone gave them to you. I said someone gave them to you. Found. You said found. Oh, all right. That still doesn't answer the question why we don't have a joint account, at least for the housekeeping. Simon and Marjorie have a joint account. They each put so much in each pay, they each have a card. We don't, because you would not put in you would take out. <laughs> Giving you plastic is like letting a baby play with a razor blade. <laughs> you are a now spender. Do you know that? You're a type, a textbook type. See something, buy something. See that new dress? See that new dress on special, only $399. <laughs> Do you know how much interest there is on plastic? 25.48%. $399 at 25.48%. Do you know how much that comes to every month? Oh, screw you. Screw you. Lovely. Four hours to change the rest of your life. Four hours that will change the rest of your life. What do you think? What? To change? That will change? You owe me $15 for your share of the meat this week. Forget the meat. <laughs> that will. That will. Yeah, that will change the rest of your life. Gives the idea that they've already made the decision. Investment advice from the experts. Taxation planning. Rollover opportunities. Advice tailored to meet your special requirements. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Sunday, 3rd of November, Nova Castrian Hotel. $80 including lunch. What do you think? What are you giving them for lunch? Prawns? Pork pork? What's it matter what they're getting for lunch? I'd like to know what I would get for an $80 lunch. The advice is $80. The lunch is free. So say free lunch. Free lunch sounds sleazy. Sending out 140 invitations. That should get me 80 people at the seminar. 6,400. Higher say 1,000. I've got to pay Jono. Jono? Redheaded. He was at school with his sister. He's a joke. Have you seen what he's done with his hair? I don't care what he's done with his hair. He knows taxation. Are you sure? He's an assessor. He works for the taxation department. He's only doing the job cheaply because I'm paying him cash. <laughs> <laughs> 500 printing posting. 4,000. I should get $4,000 out of it. Plus, of course, a percentage of what I sign up. Oh shit, the list. I forgot to allow for the list. What list? The list of names I had to buy. Why would you want to buy a list of names? I could have got Mummy and Daddy to draw up a list of their friends' names. We could draw up a list. It's a waste of money. How much did it cost? The list is the most valuable part. You've got to know the people you're dealing with. I'm only writing to people I know are retiring. People who've got big super payments coming up. Where did you buy a list like that from? You can buy a list of anything these days. Well, how do you know someone else hasn't bought the same list? They probably have. Well, how do you know the people on the list will come to your seminar? Look, it's suddenly going to get, what, 150000 
perhaps a quarter of a million dollars. For the first time in their lives, they start reading the financial pages of the paper. They don't understand a thing. Every week there's a new expert telling them about unit trusts, rollover opportunities and annuities. What the hell is it all about? They're scared shitless that something's going to gobble up their nest egg and they'll have to live on the pension for the rest of their life. What's a unit trust? Well, it's a, it doesn't matter. The thing is that all the experts tell them to shop around. So they book into all the seminars and since all the products on offer are pretty much the same, they're always sure of signing up someone. Usually, after three or four seminars, they're so confused, they start looking for a way out. They start to recognise some of the jargon. They think they understand, and so they sign up. Keep it simple, it works every time. And you think we could get rich doing that? I think I could get rich doing that. <laughs> You're going to get rich selling plastic jewellery, remember? I'll swap you a nose stud for a unit trust. A nose stud, a copper necklace, and a lap lap. Come here. Why? You know. That's it? You know? Whatever happened to grunt and point? Let's have a quickie before we go out. I can eat you up. God, you're pathetic when you beg. What's wrong with asking? What's wrong with a little romance? Ask often enough and you'll score some of the time. <laughs> it's the law of averages. Ever the accountant. Come on. Do you know how long it takes me to get ready? Wait till we get home. Now? And when we get home. <laughs> Wait till we get home. You'll have a headache. And you'll be drunk. <laughs> oh, come on. Get ready to go out. I need a bit of fun. <laughs> cold in here? No, nah, I'm a bit warm. Feel my hands. Huh, you're dying from the fingers back, Mick. Want to run to warm you up? No, thanks. Where's these dogs running tonight? Duck day. Any form in the papers? Turn it up. <coughs> you reckon this Murdoch bloke will go break? Mm. Worry you, does it? You got shares? No, but I think Mother might have. You ever notice how they put the business section right beside the sports section in the paper? Fall, dividends, ur and urges. One lot they call the mining boards. The other lot, Flemington, Randwick, Mooney Valley. <laughs> I reckon the urges that write this stuff could switch from one to the other and nobody would be any the wiser. Know anything about this uh, dog dots got running tonight? No, only what you set in the pub. Make a couple of bob on it. Yeah, you and every other bastard. I wonder about this Murdoch bloke, whether he'll go broke. I hope Mama hasn't got too many shares with him. Yeah, give this to Mama. Four hours that will change the rest of your life. <laughs> Where'd you get this? Oh, young Peter. He brought it me out of the house. He's got a list of the buggers he's sending it to. Often let me come for half price. You going? <laughs> you going? Give him a kick in the ass more likely. That's for sad bastards. Poor sad bastards just waiting out there for someone else to make them rich. Know anything about this dog dog's got running a lot? Oh, only what she said in the pub. I've got a couple of bob on him. <laughs> yeah, you and every other bastard. It's in the second. When, what, how long will it run? I haven't got a clue. We should hurry up. I'm bloody cold. You must be coming down or something. Tell you what though, if he does go broke, this uh, Murdoch, you know, or any of them, they'll turn on him. Because they don't expect to lose, so he just get rich. What? It's got race. Oh. Scott Screamers, pick it up on six weeks, yes. or go yes. to win the race at White Rock second oh, down. Oh, oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, I must be getting old. Barmaid's dog comes in and I'll get left holding the bag. Dot's got a grin from ear to ear. Good on you, love. She should be grinning. She's in a me for 250. Cool, no wonder she's excited. She told me she was only going to have a little bet with you so she wouldn't put your nose out of joint. She must have taken a tap for a bundle. I wish she'd taken half these other bastards with her. Bloody dogs. Bloody television. Races every second bloody night.
How is a man supposed to keep up with them? You sound like you did a bundle. Of course I did a bundle. One race wonders. No chance to make a decent book. You okay? Yeah. Sure? I'm, I'm okay. Oh, look, sorry mate. Shit, that was clumsy. Stupid. Setting all comers in the pub. With the barmaid's dog run. Didn't even know anything about the bar. She's talked about him often enough. <laughs> you ever heard of an owner that didn't have a champion? Mugs money, I reckon. Fruit for the sideboard. <laughs> Look at these bastards. Which one do you reckon will be up first for his money? How you holding? Not enough to pay this mob out. How much are you short? How much? What do you mean, how much? Flip it and dog me. Barmaid's dog running. Every bastard in the pub wanting a sentimental bet. Who's going to back anything else? I'm short the lot. That's what I'm short. Dot's 250 and about another 600 to boot. Shit! Why did you lay some off at the tab? I've stuffed the tab. They steal my business. Then when I get into a bit of strife, I'm supposed to go to the tab to weasel out You've of it. You've laid off before. There's no shame in that. I told you before. I thought it was Mug's money. Must be losing my grip. I didn't think it through. I just sat there and took the money. Set him like a mug leg. I didn't... I, I just didn't... It was supposed to be minis for the tin. You got the money, Nick. You can raise the money, can't you? <coughs> Think I'm going to do a run of that? Out through the shit house while you stay here and hold them back for a while? My bloody old legs wouldn't run a block, better. And one punch in the guts would do for you these days. I can't hold my head up in this pub. There's nowhere else for me to go. I have to ride the midgets tin for this one. <laughs> Christ, can you see it? Me, legging it up the street. You, go on the knuckle at the door. The run would kill me, Dada. And if it didn't, Mama would when they brought your body home. Filling them for the beer. I'll give them a bit of a rattle up. That was only the second race. We'll have them backing the boxes, taking Cornellas. Come on, you'll turn this into a big night before we go home. I'm, I'm shit scared to take a bet, Dad. Shit scared. I can't think. The old ticket's racing. I'm cobbled all over. I, I don't know what's going on. Take me home, Dad. Get me out of here. I'm frightened. <laughs> 